let's go ahead and knock out this question, y'all. Again, we're dealing with some uh, scoliosis tonight, so let's check it out. So we got Hattie presents for a physical for a physical screening prior to trying out for gymnastics while performing trunk flexion and standing. The child is found to have thoracic spinous processes that are deviated to the left and a significant rib hump on the right. So which of the following is the most likely cause of the observed abnormality? So we have A, which is a right thoracic scoliosis, B, Sherman's kyphosis, C, which is ankylosing spondylitis, and D, which is left thoracic scoliosis. All right, so let's go ahead, jump right into this puppy and knock it down. So Haiti presents for a physical uh, screening prior to trying out for gymnastics. Okay, pretty straightforward here. Nothing really major that pops out. Um, Hattie, obviously it sounds like it's a female trying out for gymnastics. What are some things that start popping in your head? You know, A, B. Jermaine, what are some things that are already starting to pop in your head in this first sentence? Any any pathologies or conditions that pop out? I mean, let's think about it. All right. So let's go down to the next sentence. It says, while performing trunk flexion in standing, the child is found to have thoracic spinous processes that are deviated to the left. That's important. And a significant rib hump on the right. So already, when you're talking about an adolescent, all right, and I don't necessarily know that Hattie's an adolescent, but just the whole trying out for gymnastics, that's what's in my mind right now. And as the person's bending forward, I know that that's typically a uh, test that we do in order to test for a scoliosis, right? We're trying to determine if that's present. That's exactly what I'm seeing here. I mean, that's the process for how we're like trying to identify someone with uh, a scoliosis during a screening and Go figure, two of our answers are dealing with that, right? And so it says, which of the following is the most likely cause of the observed abnormality? Again, I'm already like feeling the scoliosis deal because I know that this is what we do when we're screening our patients and looking at their posture, all right? So already between A and D, I'm already feeling like one of those is going to be the right answer. But before we go down and start dissecting the answer choices, I want to really look at something. I want to slow up for a second and look at this whole idea of the stand. The child is standing, right? And she's doing trunk flexion. And we find that the thoracic spinous processes are deviated to the left with a significant rib, high, uh, rib hump on the right. So what is that meaning to me? I mean, if my spinous processes in the thoracic spine are deviated to the left. What does that already tell me? What is that telling y'all right now? Jessica, AB, you know, what is that telling you? Well, that's telling me that there's some type of rotation, right? And I would say that it's rotating to the right. So already I know something about this patient that she has trunk rotation to the right. Now I just got to figure out, well, is that a right scoliosis that causes that? A left scoliosis, Sherman's kyphosis, or ankylosing spondylitis? Well, let's take a look. So A is a right thoracic scoliosis. For those of you who are unfamiliar with scoliosis, that's an abnormal lateral curvature of the spine. All right, and we can have left and we can have right and, and, and you know, these different types of scolioses. So here's the deal. How do we name the scoliosis is the important part. All right. And so we are always going to name the scoliosis by the side of the convexity. All right. So if we have, let's say that this yellow line that I'm drawing right now is that lateral curvature of the spine. You see that the convex side is right here. You see the concave side is right there. Right. And so if our person's head was right there and the feet were down here, we would name this a right thoracic scoliosis. All right. So that's first things first. Right thoracic scoliosis is exactly what I just drew for you right there. Now, here's the question. Well, if our patient bends over and they have a right thoracic scoliosis, what do I expect to see? Well, it just so happens that when it comes down to scoliosis, the, there's going to be a rotation to the side of the convexity. Write this down, baby. This is important for your MPTE, that when it comes down to scoliosis, that there is going to be a rotation of the vertebra 
to the side of the convexity. So, oh, already I really like that because it says that the spinous processes are deviated to the left. All right, so what is that saying? Well, that's a right rotation of the spine. Ah, that fits. The right thoracic scoliosis fits right now because I know that if I have that convexity on the right, that we're going to see rotation of the vertebra to the right as well. So guess what? This is making sense already. I like right thoracic scoliosis. But here's the other piece that must be you know, looked at, and that's the rib hump on the right. Right? How do I, like, what does that really mean? Like, how do I determine if it's a right or left scoliosis that causes that? So I will tell you this. You know that, that how that uh, right rotation, all right, goes with the convexity, goes to the side of the convexity? Well, that's actually where you're going to get the rib hump as well because the spine rotates to the right. And so that's the, the ribs that you really see is the ribs that are going to be on the right. It's going to create what is known as a rib hump. So for your MPTE, I need you to remember three things. I'll repeat these again, all right? You need to remember that the side of the convexity is how we name it. That's first things first, okay? So that's a right thoracic scoliosis. The next piece I need you to remember is that the side of the convexity is the side that we rotate to. Okay, so if it's a right thoracic scoliosis, we rotate to the right. Cool. Also, add this one in here, write this down, that the third thing that we're looking at is the side that we have the rotation to is going to be the side that we have the rib hump, baby. That's it. Those three things you got to remember for your MPTE. So right now, what am I saying? A is like an awesome answer. I love it. It fits exactly the clinical picture that's in the question. I like A, but as always, we have to go down and rule out the other answers with certainty. So let's check it out. B, Sherman's kyphosis. Well, Sherman's kyphosis is a condition that happens primarily with males, first of all. All right. This condition, you know, there's, there's research out there to show that it's genetic in nature. And what happens is that you actually have this increase in kyphosis because of wedging of the vertebra. All right. So if this is the anterior part, this is the posterior part, and let's say that this is a vertebra. This is what your vertebra start to look like. And you can see the, the posterior part is a lot bigger than the anterior part. And so what does that do? As the, as the spine uh, fits one vertebra on top of the other, it starts to create that major kyphosis. But I will say this, there's no major rib hump with Sherman's kyphosis. First of all, because everything is happening pretty evenly. It's just a straight kyphosis. It's not a rotation. Does that make sense, y'all? I mean, do you follow me there? So, so B is not correct. I would not expect to see a rib hump specifically on the right. I wouldn't see, expect to see a rib hump on either side. So B does not make sense for us now. Ankylosing spondylitis. Now, I will tell you this, inflammatory condition, immune uh, response where the body starts to eat away at the joints and create fusion of the spine, that's ankylosing spondylitis. This is the important part to know, that the patient again falls into more of that kyphotic posture, very similar to Sherman's kyphosis in the fact that the patient starts to go into the kyphotic posture. There's no rotation to either side. There's no abnormal lateral curvature or anything like that. That doesn't happen with ankylosing spondylitis. So guess what? I can eliminate ankylosing spondylitis. It's also found in males more often than females. All right, so make that known. Both B and C are more male-dominated. All right, and so let's look at our last answer, the left thoracic scoliosis. Well, I told you, how do we name? How do we name, y'all? How do we name our thoracic sky, uh, scoliosis? We name it by the side of the convexity, right? So this would be that left thoracic uh, scoliosis. That means that the rotation would be to the left. And actually, the spinous processes would be deviated to the right. They're not going to be deviated to the left. And so that violates part of the question, making D the not, not the best answer for sure. And that leaves us with the final 
answer of right thoracic scoliosis. Congratulations to every single one of you who got this answer correct. There was a lot of A's today. Congratulations. If you didn't get this question correct, um, maybe you didn't remember how thoracic scoliosis was named, like the different sides. Maybe you didn't understand the whole, um, well, the convexity is the side that you name it to. All right, so if it's a right convexity, right thoracic scoliosis, that's how we name it. All right, but also there are some tricks, some test strategies that you can use to arrive at the right answer. I already slipped in one earlier by telling you that the screening that this patient is doing or that this therapist is doing with our patient, having them bend over, trying out for gymnastics, all this stuff leads us to this idea that we're checking for a patient's scoliosis, which would already eliminate B and C for you. It always should have came down to A and D. But then, guess what? You get down to the final two answers, and then you have to select the right one. But I'm telling you that there are some test-taking strategies that are out there that will guide you to that right answer. That's exactly what I want to show you. If you come on over to destroythenpte.com, I want to show you a specific skill that you can use with these types of questions to get down to that right answer every time, guaranteed. All right, want to teach you that. DestroyTheMPT.com. Hit me up, baby. So glad to have every single one of you in here tonight. Happy Thanksgiving. <music>